Hi, it's Dwyer, GamblersAdvisory.com, DwyerVIP.com for premium picks, DwyerSportsBetting.com, same site. Look us up in the sports section on Roku, we're there, Dwyer Boxing and Sports News. Remember, the opinion you should follow should be your own. Just consider this video to be a second opinion from a complete stranger online. First, some housekeeping. Tennis delivered for us. If you're a DwyerSportsBetting.com person, right, and you can see the picks, they're posted for free on DwyerSportsBetting.com, right? The hedge, set betting hedge in tennis, in the match between Novak Djokovic and Roger Federer went our way. Uh, the suggested play was to hedge Djokovic in three sets against Roger Federer simply to win the match. Understand you got a plus 275 in using the set betting hedge of Djokovic in three sets, right? Had Federer won, you would have gotten a plus 140. So, of course, even when you back out the hedge, you made a nice profit on Djokovic winning it in three sets. Just note that in the three prior times these two men faced each other, the match always made it to the third set, right? Neither guy had won in straight sets for the prior three meetings. We took a chance. Federer, the older tennis player, looked inspired. He did succeed in pushing it to the third set. That's all you needed to get a taste of the plus 275, right? Change the format of DwyerSportsBetting.com. Now we're not charging for things. We just have donation links for those of you who, if you win, want to kick back a little something something. Okay? Let's also talk about this fight. Juan Manuel Lopez, who before the fight I said might be shot. I still think so. Getting the KO over Daniel Ponce de Leon. Now, of course, the suggested play here delivered. Because, of course, I recommended that you take both guys to win by KO. The odds allowed it. Right? Even though it was a 10-round fight, I didn't see it going the distance. The reason why I didn't recommend the under on the over-under was simply because I wanted all 10 rounds. I didn't want to fool around with an over-under and then end up with a late KO and no profit. Right now, let me just make a few points because I understand knockouts cause amnesia. Right? Fighter gets an early knockout. If he's Juan Manuel Lopez, he talks about how people doubted him, how he's back, how the result proves it. Right? People who haven't seen the fight who don't know that Lopez himself hit the canvas in the fight, who don't know that he looked robotic in his coordination, will think that Lopez looked great in front of the hometown crowd. After all, who could argue with a knockout of a credible opponent? But let's dig a little deeper here. Right? First, let's just talk about the math of the fight. Understand that while Lopez fights out of a southpaw stance, in my opinion, it's obvious looking at him, and you need to double-check me on things like this, I believe he's a righty masquerading as a southpaw. That's significant because his dominant hand is not his left hand. His dominant hand is actually his lead hand, the hand he's jabbing with, the hand he's hooking with. Right? What I'm suggesting is that if you could neutralize this front hand, there isn't much else there. This is different than Vladimir Klitschko and Canelo. Understand, those guys have good jabs. Those guys have great lead hooks. But those guys also have their money punch back here. You don't want to get hit with an overhand right hand from Vladimir Klitschko. You don't want to get hit with an overhand right hand by Canelo. Understand, whatever they're doing up front, 
right? And hitting you with a jab, hurting you, stuff like that. Understand the real power is back here, right? It's true that both guys can knock you out with left hooks, right? Their left hooks have bang. But understand, even if you block the left hook, if you get sloppy and Vladimir Klitschko lines you up, for a straight right hand, he can take you out with that straight right hand. Right? I don't believe Juan Manuel Lopez can take you out with his straight left hand, right? He's fighting not in a righty position, he's fighting in a southpaw position. I also believe that because of the wars he has been in, right? His coordination isn't what it once was. I believe in the sport they call that a shot fighter. What I'm saying to you is that one Manuel Lopez is older than his birth certificate suggests, right? And I mean physically. Maybe he's chronologically that age, but physically there's been a lot of wear and tear on his body. This is a car with a lot of wear and tear on the tire. So let's talk about Ponce and the mistake he made, right? Understand you're fighting a guy who doesn't have the best coordination, right? Who might have been hit up so much in the past, who might have been the victim of such flush shots that he can't move around the ring like he could have in the past. Now you couple that with the fact that he's fighting out of an unnatural stance. And I know online, I've read the comments here, I know there are many YouTubers who disagree with me on this. But I believe when you are inverted, when you are a righty fighting out of a southpaw stance, you don't move as well as when you're a righty fighting out of a righty stance. Right? Because, of course, just like you are left or right-handed, you are left or right-legged. Right? Field goal kickers in the NFL don't just randomly switch legs on extra points. Right? You know, soccer players know that when they're going with their best shot, they're going to hit it with the same leg. Right? I believe that if I switch... And if I have my dominant hand, instead of back here, if I have it over here, then if I'm going up against a mobile opponent, think Hagler against Leonard. If I'm going up against a mobile opponent and that guy can move me around the ring, I'm going to be at a disadvantage in terms of the movement. Let me go one step further. Marvin Hagler... And I'm talking about a guy I think the world of. Right? Hagler is one of my favorite fighters ever. When you come to my YouTube page, you'll see a picture, part of a face on my YouTube page. That's Marvin Hagler's face. Right? Marvin Hagler did a lot of things well in the ring. But can we agree that fighting while backing up wasn't one of them. When he's moving, he's predominantly on his front foot. I don't believe an inverted fighter can move like a Ray Leonard or an Ali in the 1960s. Right? If you see a guy moving around the ring and looking great doing so, in my opinion, that guy's fighting out of a natural stance. Now, I'll agree. There are switches. Andre Durrell comes to mind. Right? Who moves around the ring well, and when you watch Durrell, he'll switch between righty and lefty. The argument I'm making is when he's in his natural stance, he's much more fluid. Right? Much more fluid. So... If you're fighting a guy like Juan Manuel Lopez, who, in my opinion, has movement issues, doesn't move well, doesn't move 
gracefully at this stage of his career. Seems to have some balance problems in my opinion. Right? When you're fighting him and you also know he has stamina problems. Look at the last two rounds of his fight against Rogers Matagua. You're going to be shocked. Right? Understand, Juan Ma is a knockout puncher. A lot of these knockout punchers, the minute you get them into the later rounds, weird things start to happen. Longtime viewers here online know that I'm a skeptic of Deontay Wilder. We know how Wilder looks in the first four rounds of a fight. Okay, great. I'd like to see how he looks in the last four rounds of a fight. One of the secrets to the Rumble in the Jungle, Ali Foreman, was the fact that Foreman lacked stamina. At that time, oddly enough, older Foreman had more stamina than younger Foreman, right? Younger Foreman fell over against Jimmy Young, lost that fight in the later rounds, right? Younger Foreman runs out of gas against Ali. A lot of these sluggers, when you're talking about the last third of a fight, it's foreign country for them. So, when you watch the Ponce fight, and it's sad, Ponce comes out and has much better coordination, much better athleticism. Yes, I'm talking about the guy who got knocked out. He's moving much better. Forget the punches. Just look at the movement. He's moving much better than Juan Manuel Lopez. What could possibly go wrong? And you know what went wrong. It was the worst thing that happened to Ponce in the fight. He knocks down Lopez. Ponce actually had been pumping a jab. Ponce had been moving better. He's in against a slugger who's most awake early in the fight. He knocks down Lopez. Lopez gets back up. Ponce then, of course, starts hanging too close to him. I'm sure Ponce thought, this is just a matter of time. Let me move in. Let me finish this job. He should have done exactly the opposite. Right? Understand, in my opinion, Lopez is having coordination problems, and we know he has stamina problems. That jab is working. Also, let's do the math. If he's throwing, both guys are southpaws. If Ponce is throwing a right jab, understand, since Lopez's dominant hand is out front, right? Lopez needs for you to either run into his jab, be close enough to him to run into his jab, which is his power hand, or to be even more foolish than that and get so close to him that he can throw the right hook. Right? Because he's a righty fighting as a southpaw. He wants to hit you with this. So Ponce should have been throwing a right jab. Creating the angles. Keeping Juan Ma moving. Why go in for the kill against a guy who doesn't have your stamina whose power is going to drop off in the middle rounds. You've already won the round by getting the knockdown. Right? No one's going to give the other guy the round when you're the one looking better getting the knockdown. So since you're having success shooting a jab and moving around the ring. Isn't that what you should be doing for at least the next two to three rounds to tire out Juan Ma? This way, if Juan Ma hits you with that right hook later in the fight, he might be too tired for that right hook to matter. 
right? So instead, Ponce, who had been fighting a great fight up until that point, amps it up a little bit after knocking down Juan Ma. It was Christmas time in Puerto Rico. Here you have Juan Ma, who's not the athlete Ponce is. Sorry, Juan Ma fans, he's just not. If these two guys were in a decathlon, I would take Ponce all day. He's not the athlete Ponce is. Here is Juan Ma getting off the canvas, clearing his head, and where is Ponce? Ponce's right in front of him. Right, where is Ponce? Ponce is not only right in front of him, but Ponce, curiously enough, is dropping his left hand. Right, he has his left hand around here. Doesn't have it up, is completely defenseless for Juan Ma's best punch, his lead right hook. I mean, Juan Ma hits him flush. Right, let me say this. I agree with Juan Ma that the fight should have been stopped. The ref actually allows the fight to continue. But it's clear that Ponce de Leon is not completely lucid. I know Ponce after the fight said, hey, my head cleared, maybe versus two seconds earlier. But he was still disoriented. Also, even when he was fully lucid, he didn't have his left hand up. And keep in mind, you know, this is the problem with fighting an inverted guy, right? I'm sure Ponce, who in the post-fight interview, talked about being hit with a left hook. It's not a left hook. It's a right hook, right? Ponce was fighting and probably momentarily thought that Juan Ma's power punch, since he's in a southpaw stance, was his left hand. It's not. It's his right hand. Right, so he leaves himself open for the right hook. He gets dropped. He ultimately gets stopped. Right, so I'll say this. I mean, more beer for us, as I said before. Even though I didn't believe in Juan Ma, part of my play was Juan Ma by KO. Right, more beer for us, but rest assured that if Juan Ma faces a guy with a jab, who can actually keep him outside for a while. This is a reverse Deontay Wilder. With Wilder, you want to get inside. Right? Because Wilder, Wilder's money punch is a long right hand. With Juan Ma, you actually want to get outside the range of his lead right hook. Right? You want to get outside and keep him turning. Right outside the range of his jab, which is a pile driver, because of course his jab is with his dominant hand. Right, Juan Ma is like Hagler, Juan Ma is like Oscar De La Hoya. This is different than Larry Holmes, who had the pile driver jab, but who also had the power in the other hand. Right, understand here it's a stance strategy the guy has his dominant hand out front I believe Ponce walks right into it I believe he had the right game plan in the beginning you'll notice him shooting a jab you'll notice that he has more pep in his step than Juanma and think about it this is the same Ponce who is really a stationary fighter Look at how stationary he was against Adrian Broner. But yet against Juan Ma, there's a gap. It looks like Ponce has the foot speed advantage. He certainly looks like he's the better athlete. I believe if he looks at the film, he'll realize what he should have done. And Ponce has a use punch. Is he should have stretched this fight out a little bit. Keep moving. Keep pumping a jab. Rack up points. I agree. Fights in Puerto Rico. He's fighting a Puerto Rican legend. But when you're the guy getting the knockdowns, there's only so much the judges can do. Right? So he should have kept Juan Ma moving a little bit. Then as Juan Ma's coordination deteriorated. By the way, that's what happens 
to fighters who have been hit a lot and who neurologically are not the same as where they were when they were younger. Right? You'll notice older fighters, they're coordinated. Everybody's coordinated the first three rounds. It's as that fight goes along that you notice some fighters start to tire faster. Right? That the effort they made to bob and weave is gone over time. You remember Mike Tyson later in his career. Right? This is the same Mike Tyson who had gone the distance with, you name it, Bone Crusher Smith and other guys when he was younger. Guys would hug him for 12 rounds, right? You notice older Tyson, especially against Evander Holyfield, his game started falling apart when you got to the 5th, 6th, 7th, 8th rounds, right? The bounce that he had when he was younger was gone, right? I believe one was at that part of his career. Had Ponce pushed this out a little bit, stretched it out a little bit, I believe Ponce would still have been in a position to close the show later in the fight. Right? Be that as it may, the take both by knockout delivered. Just know, though, that I still have Lopez on my list of guys who are vulnerable in the ring. I tip my hat to him on winning this fight against a, you know, world-class opponent. Absolutely. Right? But this fight doesn't prove to me that he has the coordination or stamina that he had as a young man. Right? And certainly, his defense is the kind of defense that had him on the canvas in this two-round fight. If you're a one Ma fan... You should be concerned. If I were a member of Juan Ma's family, I'd be saying, hey, dad or bro or uncle, you know, maybe it's time that we move out of the ring into managing other fighters or being a celebrity spokesman or being an ambassador for the sport, right? Some capacity other than boxing. You know, really, at this point, I think Juan Ma, in a sense, is older than Bernard Hopkins. Let me hear from you. Leave your comments for me here online. Visit us at gamblersadvisory.com. And all I'm saying is this. I don't mean to criticize Juan Ma too severely. But understand that when you follow the sport of boxing, when you see legends walking around with slurred speech, when you notice a guy getting hit flush in fight after fight, when you notice a guy hitting the canvas seemingly in fight after fight, right? The first two, well, the two Orlando Salido fights. Don't forget the Mikey Garcia fight. What about this fight, right? All I'm saying is somebody has to step in and say, hey, hey, before this guy hurts himself in the ring, Boxing fans need to take a hard look at this. Let me hear from you. Thanks for stopping by.